What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. We have a big day today. First up, we have Ripple the company announcing that they're going to be acquiring Fortress Trust. We've spoken about Fortress Trust all year and they're a very legitimate organization for infrastructure, compliance, etc. Brad says we've known the Fortress Trust team now for years. What they've achieved in a few short years since incorporation is commendable. I'm excited to see how Ripple expands in the realm of crypto infrastructure services with the Fortress Trust team. Fortress Trust financial and regulatory infrastructure complements and expands Ripple's comprehensive of portfolio of blockchain solutions for finance. So I personally expect this acquisition to absolutely go through after reading some of the commentary from Fortress Trust. And this news follows Ripple's recent acquisition of crypto custody provider Medico for $250 million, one of the largest deals in the space in 2023. Ripple the company was an early investor in Fortress Trust as well. And Ripple's growing portfolio of regulatory licenses expands as Fortress Trust holds a Nevada Trust license. Ripple and its other subsidiaries collectively hold a New York Bit license, which is very strict, and more than 30 money transmitter licenses across the U.S. And an in-principle major payment institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the Central Bank of Singapore. Acquiring Fortress Trust affords us a lot of optionality to both improve the current customer experience in our existing products and explore new, complementary products, all in service of becoming the one-stop shop for enterprises looking to convert, store, and move value on the blockchain around the world. So we know Ripple is addressing the multi-trillion dollar pain points in the cross-border payments market utilizing blockchain and crypto, and cross-border payments are expected to grow to $250 trillion in the coming years. And they're acquiring organizations left and right. Medico is huge. They're connected to Citi and some of the world's largest banks, and that is specifically for crypto custody. It is not just custody. This is crypto custody and digital asset usage. So the world's biggest banks are getting into it. And they're expanding their product offerings to address new use cases like liquidity management. I think of the liquidity hub, tokenization, CBDCs with the XRP Ledger CBDC platform. And Ripple serves hundreds of customers in over 55 countries and six continents with payout capabilities in 70 plus markets. So over 90% of the $6 trillion per day foreign exchange market. So what we're seeing is integrations across the board, but now that we're connected to a huge part of the market, we need to ramp up that volume and actually use ODL at scale. And again, I believe this acquisition goes through after Ripple put this article and then seeing some commentary from Fortress Trust preaching that Ripple is one of the best companies in the blockchain space. And the deal closure is subject to due diligence and regulatory approvals. And also note that Fortress Trust has partnered with a variety of organizations including token events as well for any DAG holders and their native token fan, FAN. And you can learn more at tknevents.com or tokenevents.com. And some of their advisors for token events include Rob Cornish, recently served as the CTO of Gemini. And before working at Gemini, Rob was the Chief Information Officer of the New York Stock Exchange. So we're seeing heavy hitters from traditional finance entering the crypto market because they see the potential, they know the future will be tokenized. Yes, it takes time and retail typically enters early in an emerging and very risky asset class before regulatory clarity. But the retail investors that choose the right projects before the actual floodgates open with institutional money and regulatory clarity, we can potentially be set up for a life-changing opportunity. And the longer the bear market lasts, the more it convinces retail investors that prices will never rise. Again, bear markets can last hundreds of days, and there have been multiple bear markets that have lasted over 1,000 days, and this time has been no different. Although it's been a lot rougher for the altcoin market, I believe there's going to be future bull runs. And these bear markets, by design, convince the majority of already beaten down retail investors that prices will never rise again, and this happens like clockwork until the next bull run. Also note that iTrust Capital has been partnered with Fortress for months now. They use multi-party computation, offline cold storage, SOC 2 Type 2 certifications, security and financial audits by external firms, and I can't emphasize enough how big Fortress really is and how legitimate they are for compliance and Web3 infrastructure. And they also utilize BitGo and Fireblocks, two of the largest custodian and infrastructure plays in the space. And remember, this is institutional grade. This is not some small retail use case. Things take time to be built and they have to be tested, 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 and perfect for institutions to trust it. So I trust Capital leverages Fortress. Fortress supports a variety of assets and recently supported HBAR. So I trust Capital, if you're interested in creating a free account, is linked in the top of the YouTube video description. If you use that link and fund your account, you'll also get a $100 funding reward. And as you guys know, I've had a Roth IRA with iTrust Capital for tax-free trading and tax-free investing since 2020, and I was with BitIRA before that. And you can learn more about Fortress that will likely be acquired by the company Ripple at Fortress.io. Ranges from institutional-grade digital asset wallets, electronic payments, and tokenization. Trusted by a variety of organizations. And what's important about this is they are MPC secure with institutional-grade security and compliant. 
They're going to help Ripple with crypto liquidity, compliance, payments, custody, settlement, royalty escrow. And I know right now the NFT market, especially in a bear market, seems like a complete joke, but that is just a sign of how early we are. Institutions around the globe are going to be using NFTs at scale. Blockchain technology and NFTs will be used at scale in e-commerce, loyalty and reward programs, gaming, etc. And blockchain in the entertainment and gaming market is projected to reach $4.3 billion by 2026, growing at a CAGR of 71%. That is insane growth. And blockchain and media, entertainment, and advertising is expected to grow by 18x by 2028. When you see this type of growth for an emerging asset class to impact and improve the efficiency and save these other sectors billions of dollars and grow by 18x, that's a huge sign the crypto asset class is not going anywhere. Yes, some altcoins that are not legitimate may not become as liquid and disappear, but the crypto asset class as a whole is going to succeed, and the best, most used, most integrated products are going to succeed. And the growth of projects in the top 50, top 100 could be exponential in the coming years. So on Casper Labs' website, just emphasizing better intellectual property protection and showing true ownership of assets, tracking identity, and efficiently monetizing them and automating all of this with smart contracts. And you can prove verifiable ownership and automate policies to ensure that you're fairly compensated by those accessing your IP. 10 years from now, everybody's going to understand what crypto is and blockchain. It's going to be underlying a lot of the tech stack that we see today, except nobody's going to know they're using a crypto asset. Some of these enterprise projects like Casper and QNT, they offer a US dollar subscription service. So you pay for computation just just like an AWS credit, except you're using the token Casper. So some of these enterprise customers to use the network to save them billions of dollars will pay for gas fees using a subscription service as US dollar, but the US dollar is used to purchase Casper because Casper is the fuel of the network. Any transaction for any Fudsters, every single transaction that is connected to the public Casper network requires Casper. Casper is the only token required for computation of the network. We already know that Casper Labs is working with dozens of Fortune 500 companies under NDA, including Verizon and Siemens. And they've said about 90% of these enterprise clients are building hybrid networks, but they want them connected to the public network. They want the best of both worlds of private and public, and that is the future. That is Web4. Verifiable ownership, upgradable NFTs. You can also make them immutable if you don't want them ever to be changed, but you have flexibility. But you have complete flexibility in the user and role access for account permissions and contract permissions. So it's flexible and the future is unwritten. It can change and stay compliant. So Ripple, the company, is acquiring companies left and right, custodians like Medico, worth a quarter billion dollars, connected to major banks like Citi and others, infrastructure like Fortress Trust, and a variety of PSPs or payment service providers. They are focused on liquidity, custody, tokenization, and compliance. And they believe that institutional crypto custody, the key word, is expected to reach $10 trillion by 2030. So if we think about the crypto asset class today, sitting at $1 trillion, a 10x in institutional crypto custody alone, as it's projected to have $16 trillion in tokenized assets of globally illiquid assets in the coming years. Now, Medico is based in Switzerland, just like Casper, a very friendly regulatory environment that is focused on digital assets. IBM executives are helping Medico expand. The bank BBVA is building crypto muscle with Medico. This Philippine bank is going to be launching crypto trading. DZ Bank selects Medico to underpin its institutional digital asset custody offering. You have DecaBank choosing Medico as its core platform for institutional digital asset offerings. You have BNP Pariba. You have Union Bank going live on Medico for cryptocurrency services. You have Archax. Remember they tokenized, I believe it was, what, 15 or 16 billion euros on HBAR. Initially for the company Aberdeen, who is a Hedera Council member, they have over 500 billion AUM. And between Archax and Aberdeen, they are tokenizing a money market fund on Hedera and more funds in the future. And even just a couple months ago, Citigroup, one of the largest banks controlling the cross-border market for the correspondent banking network, reviews partnership with crypto custodian Medico. So this was recent, but they've been partnered with Medico since 2022. And last but not least, guys, we'll talk about XLS30 in the next video. We are hoping that the validators can vote 80% or higher for two weeks, and then the automated market makers will go live on the XRP ledger. So I'm going to be taking part. You don't have to bet the farm, but if every single XRP holder put in $100 or $200 into the AMM and use their XRP to earn more XRP, this could be a huge use case and actually drive price drastically. And right here in Ripple Engineering, so this slipped under the radar. I didn't realize that there's going to be new updates to the XRP ledger to improve its actual throughput and transactions per second. So historically, the XRP ledger can process up to 1,500 transactions per second. With this upcoming update, recent testing for an upcoming release resulted in over 3,400 sustained transactions per second. This is over a 4,000% improvement from the earlier test years ago. 
So the more scalable a network, the better, but you have to find the right balance between security, decentralization, and throughput. Bottom line, this is a great thing for the XRP ledger. The more scalable the network, the more XRP can be sent per second, and the more XRP could be used, making it more liquid. When an asset has better liquidity and on-ramps and all of these bridges, it can have more volume. And just like the foreign exchange market in yesterday's video, $6 trillion plus is traded on a daily basis. Now, 87% of the $6 trillion per day market is speculation. The 87% of speculators in the $6 trillion market are crucial for the value of currencies and the liquidity of currencies. So I would argue a lot of these public networks, the XRP Ledger, Hedera, etc., it is very important to have speculation as well for necessary liquidity. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts, I'll catch you in the next one.